up world? It's your boy Philosco here and today we're going to have another great lesson on using phrasal verbs. This is like my 11th episode or whatnot. If you want to see the other ones, you can just watch the episode before this on the phrasal verbs playlist of my channel. So let's get to it. Today we're going to learn four. And unlike usual times and like other videos in which I step to the left to give an explanation, because of how the wall is, I'm actually going to step to my right to give the explanation. So the first phrasal verb we're going to learn for today is pick something out. Now, what does it mean to pick something out? Well, using a single word to translate this, it is to choose. So let's use this example. Look at these shirts here. And I'm going to give you some example sentences. So let's say someone were to say to me, hey Phil, why don't you pick out a shirt you like and I'll buy it for you? Why don't you pick out a shirt you like? They're basically asking me to choose, to pick which one I want. That's picking something out. But at the same time, because this phrasal verb is separable, you can also use the words pick and out right next to each other without putting something in the middle. For example, someone could have also said to me, hey Phil, pick out a shirt that you like. Pick out a shirt that you like. See, you can use them either way because this phrasal verb is separable. So you can say pick out a shirt or you can say pick a shirt out. Anything like that works with this phrasal verb when you're speaking about choosing. So another example. So let's say we're looking at a map, a map of the whole entire world, and I was a rich guy. Remember, we're pretending I was a rich guy. I can say to you, hey, pick out a city in the world, anywhere you want to go, and we'll go. Just pick out a city, and we'll go there. We use together and separate. Simple. So let's get to the second one. And the second one we're going to learn for today is to point someone out. To point someone out or something out. You can point out a person or you can point out an object. Now what is pointing? Doing this, basically using your finger to indicate something. So right now I'm pointing at the camera, and right now I'm pointing at the camera's little TV, and I'm pointing at myself. That's pointing and it's done with your pointer finger. A lot of us refer to it as the pointer finger. But when you point someone out, or finger someone out, when you point someone out, you're basically indicating a certain person. So for example, a lot of times when people get hurt in America and they think they know what the criminal looks like, they have to attend a lineup. A lineup looks like this. And what the person has to do is stand there, you know, the criminals can't see the person. The victim, that's the person. The criminals cannot see the victim. The glass is only one way. The victim can see them, but they can't see the victim, right? That victim has to point out the person who hurt them. So it can be used in sentences like this. The cop can say, hey, point out the guy who hurt you. Point out the guy who hurt you. Or the cop can say, point the guy out who hurt you. Because this one, like the last one, is also separable. Well, not all phrasal verbs are separable, but the two that I told you so far are. And there you go, to indicate somebody using your finger. Or to indicate someone using your finger. So, let's go to the next one, the third one. And the third phrasal verb for today is, to put someone down. Now, what is putting someone down? Well, we're not speaking literally here. We're not talking about putting someone up in the sky and then putting them down on the floor. No, that is not what we're talking about when you're putting someone down. To put someone down means to insult and make them feel bad by calling them bad names. Now, there's nobody in the world I know better who can put people down better than my sister, Philipskina. Whenever she wants to make me feel bad and she wants to put me down, she just tells me things like this. I always put my brother down because he's stupid, he ugly, and he dumb. I put him down every single day. You should put your brother down too if he's stupid. My brother been stupid since he was little and ugly. So I can use this in example sentences. For example, I put my brother down. I put him down all the time by calling him stupid. But what's interesting about this phrasal verb is that it can only be used separable when you're using it as a phrasal verb. So you cannot say, put down my brother. It would be, put my brother down. And you can't say, go and put down Filochko, it's put Filochko down. But if you want to use put down together, it's usually used as a noun. Not a phrasal verb, but a noun. So for example, I always put my brother down, so what does that make me? That makes me a put down, because I put my brother down all the time. I'm a put down. But when it comes to the phrasal verb, the phrasal verb, you cannot put it together. It's only separate, baby. Exactly. She puts me down all the time. It can't be used together as a phrasal verb. It's only used separately. But 
But when it's together, it can be used as a noun. My sister is the best put down I know because she is always putting me down. She's always putting me down all the time. And there you go. So let's get to the fourth and last one for today. And the last one for today is play on. Now, what does it mean to play on? Well, it basically means to continue, to continue doing the sport that you're involved in. So the best example I can give for this is if you play football, which is known as soccer in America, but you play football, but your toe hurts just a little bit, you know, not too much, but it hurts just a little bit, but all your friends are like, come on, man, play on, dude, you can do it, play on, don't give up, just play on, that means continue playing. But they won't separate it because it won't make sense in America. They wouldn't do that. They wouldn't say, come on, man, play your foot on or play the game on. It's just play on. Come on, let's do it. You can play on if you choose to. So there you go. I hope you got it. So you know what that means. And so that's the end of the episode for today. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned new stuff. Be sure to add me, vk.com slash Velasco. That's me. And subscribe to my YouTube page to see all of my videos. Right now I'm in two men, two two men, how it's called, <laughs> having a good time. But soon I'll be having classes in Moscow during February. So definitely send me an email if you are in Moscow and you want to attend the classes. Meet me in person and learn in person. It'll be a lot of fun. So that's it. You know what the dude says at the end of every single video. And don't be racist. <laughs> so don't be ra That is his catchphrase.